Nigeria is actually more of a gas than an oil producing country. COP26, President Buhari addresses world leaders make case for cars as transition energy towards net zero emission. Countdown to Anambra governorship election, INEC chairman arrives Oka for finishing touches. to assure and reassure the people of Anambra that the election is holding on Saturday as scheduled. Nigeria switch over gains momentum as Kano goes digital. Kano specialists are being network center will bring more visibility to Kano State. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Juma Yusuf. Reading with me tonight, I am Mark, uh, Mike Olale in Lagos. And Kemi Oshin is in our Bado Network Center. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's begin with COP26 as President Muhammadu Buhari has announced Nigeria's commitment to net zero by the year 2060. Achieving this, he however said, depends largely on the ability of the country to integrate an unprecedented 7 gigawatts additional renewable energy capacity each year. This was while addressing the 26th session of the United Nations Conference on Climate Change in Glasgow, Scotland. The State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. I do not think anyone in Nigeria needs persuading of the need for urgent action on the environment. Desertification in the north, floods in the center, pollution and erosion on the coast, and Lake Chad, now a shadow of itself from a vast expanse of biodiversity, as President Buhari says, are enough evidence that climate change in Nigeria is not about what might happen tomorrow. It is already happening today and with devastating consequences. Nigeria is not looking to make the same mistakes that have been repeated for decades by others. We are looking for partners in innovation, technology and finance to make cleaner and more efficient use of all available resources to help make for a more stable transition in energy markets. Nigeria is committed to net zero by 2060. Zero net, the president agrees, can lead to economic transformation across all sectors and therefore a detailed energy transition plan and roadmap based on data and evidence has been developed by the federal government. And the data and evidence shows that Nigeria can continue to use gas until 2040 without detracting from the goals of the Paris Agreement. Nigeria is actually more of a gas than an oil producing country. Consequently, I am requesting for financing of projects using transition fuels such as gas. Nigeria insists that attaining national and global climate change goals will require adequate and sustained technical and financial support to developing countries. Emerging economies, President Buhari says, need access to stable and abundant supply of inexpensive energy if the desired growth and prosperity that underpin political stability and democracy are to be delivered. Nigeria's commitment to a just transition is reflected in our ambitious energy compact, which includes the government's flagship project to electrify 5 million households and 25 million people using decentralized solar energy solutions. This is a major step towards closing our energy excess deficit by 2030. And in furtherance of his commitment to the implementation of the Paris Agreement, Nigeria pledges a 20% emissions reduction below business as usual, as well as additional 47% by the year 2030. Financial assistance, technology transfer, and capacity building from more advanced countries, as well as willing international partners, are however required towards achieving the objectives. From Glasgow, Scotland, Adamusambo, NTA News.
Meanwhile, Nigeria needs an estimated $1.5 trillion over a 10-year period in order to achieve an appreciable level of the national infrastructure stock. President Mohamedou Buhari disclosed this figure at a high-level side event on improving global infrastructure hosted by U.S. President Joe Biden, EU Commission President Von der Yen, and the U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Adam Osambu has details. President Muhammad Buhari told a high-level meeting that a clear legal and regulatory framework for private financing of infrastructure has already been developed by his administration. The country, he said, is now ready for investments in infrastructural development by willing international partners. President Buhari believes that new investments in critical sectors of the economy would aid in lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by the year 2030, saying there is a clear nexus between the provision of infrastructure and the overall economic development of a nation. The president welcomed the G7 countries for their groundbreaking plan to mobilize hundreds of billions of dollars of infrastructure investments for low and middle income countries under the Build Back Better World initiative. He used the occasion to outline the principles, values, and standards Nigeria would like to see from the initiative and the challenges the country has faced in partnering with donors on infrastructure development. The aim of pursuing quality infrastructure investment, the president explained, is to create a virtual cycle of economic activities while ensuring sound public finances. President Buhari made a case for the alignment of infrastructure projects with national strategies and nationally determined contributions. From Glasgow, Scotland, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Let's bring you up to speed with news making the round back home. The FCT Commissioner of Police, Babaji Sandi, says additional tactical and conventional policing resources have been positioned at the University of Abuja main and satellite campuses, as well as the staff quarters and other affiliate formations of the university to fortify security following this morning's attack by gunmen on the staff quarters in Giri, Gwagalada Area Council of the FCT. Rosemary Motileng Bilal has an update. Marine and academic environment of the staff quarters of University of Abuja at Giri, few kilometers from Gogolada was disrupted early Tuesday morning by uninvited visitors who shot sporadically shattering window glasses and breaking doors in an attack that lasted about an hour according to accounts by residents. They were able to get gain access into our house. They broke the window and came in. Please, whatever you can do to be able to track them down for my husband to come back alive and the others they kidnapped alongside with him. The FCT Police Command moved promptly to fortify security in and around the University of Puja. Personnel of the Nigerian Army 176 Guards Battalion were also mobilized to the area to protect the citizens. Right from 12.45, we've been on ground. Uh, when we received the distress call of sporadic shooting in the university quarters here. This is one of the most devastating you know, uh, incidences and it's very sad that this great university is being attacked this way. We tried our best that night, but unfortunately before their arrival, they were already away in the bush. I am sure something supposed to will come out from this investigation. Security agents are calling for calm, assuring that the perpetrators will be arrested and brought to book. The legislative arm is one of the three arms of government saddled with the responsibility of checkmating the activities of the executive with a view to doing the right thing. However, leadership tussle is affecting activities of the lawmakers representing various constituency in Plateau State House of Assembly. Indiang Adeaba Gyang reports. Plateau State House of Assembly has 24 members. Out of these, APC has 15, while PDP has 9. The House has continued to enjoy harmonious relationship until the ongoing crisis, which led to the impeachment of the former Speaker Abok Nuhu Ayuba, replaced by the new Speaker Yakubu Sanda. The development divided the House as the former Speaker's group has 11 members, while the present leadership has 13. 
However, spokesperson to the former speaker described the impeachment as illegal as due process was not followed. We are in the premises of the Plateau State Housing Center and we are here to protect uh, our legitimate uh, right as members and to ensure that the right thing is being done. The new speaker says 16 members, which is to third majority, signed the document for Abbott's removal. People that signed the impeachment are 16 in number. And by the, by the rules of the game, even eight can sit in the chamber and take decisions. This development is paralyzing legislative activities as the state assembly complex has been taken over by security personnel. In Jaws, Indian and the Abagyang, NTA News. In the build-up to the Anambra governorship election, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Yaqub, Yaqubu Mahmoud, has held meetings with heads of security institutions in Anambra state ahead of Saturday's governorship election. Udo Okoronko Chuku has details. Accompanied by the national and state officers of the commission, Professor Mahmoud commended the security agencies in the state for their support and said the meeting is for an update on the security situation. On Thursday, the parties and candidates will commit to peaceful elections in Anambra State by signing the National Peace Accord under the auspices of the National Peace Committee. They have been uh, bringing in actionable intelligence and we have been responding properly to all uh, the intel that they have been bringing. We have also been having uh, meetings of all the service command. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced the distribution of non-sensitive materials for Saturday's governorship election. The Anambra State Governor, Willie Obiano, declares Thursday and Friday as work free day for civil servants to enable them prepare ahead of the Saturday's governorship election. In Oka, Udo Okoron Kochuku, NTN News. To judicial matters now, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has granted the request by the People's Democratic Party for an extension of time to enable it file processes necessary to be joined as a respondent in a suit filed by the Deputy Governor of Zamfara State, Mahadi Ali Ugusaw, challenging attempts by the State House of Assembly to impeach him. Olabode Arewa reports. The court had earlier granted an order restraining the defendants from proceeding with the impeachment process pending the determination of the substantive suits. When the case came up for hearing Tuesday, the defendants made submissions on compliance with the earlier court order. The Zafar State House of Assembly had initiated the impeachment proceedings against Mahadi Aliu, the deputy governor, for his alleged actions following Governor Bilu Muhammad Matawale's defection to the All Progressive Congress. What we want is I want to bring every party every participant in the political uh, space in Zamfara to court so that this issue can be decided once and for all. More importantly, order section 308 of the Constitution, there's complete and total immunity from a governor, a sitting governor, a sitting deputy governor being joined in any civil or criminal proceedings. And that is the law. The matter is adjourned to January 18th, 2022, in Abuja, Labo, News. The body of senior advocates of Nigeria has held a meeting with the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakal Malami San, over last Friday's invasion of the Abuja home of a Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Mary Odili. Spokesman of the body, Adeboyega Amolo, Awolo Molo San, who spoke with the journalist after the meeting held behind closed doors, expressed concern about the incident. Attorney General, and uh, he has very sincerely opened up to us as his colleagues. He's an SCN like us, and is our pride at the inner bar. He has explained to us that the federal government, neither the federal government nor the office of attorney general has anything to do with the incident. In another development, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has described the alleged unlawful invasion of Justice Mary Odili's house by unknown security operatives as an act of impunity taken too far. 
the apex court in a statement by the director of press and information Festus Akande said that the attack was uncivilized a shameful show of primitive force on an innocent judicial officer and a gory picture of war by some armed persons suspected to be security operatives. The Apex Court warned that the judiciary should not be misconstrued by any individual or institution of government as the weeping child among the three arms of government. We'll take a break now. When we return, more reports coming your way. Do stay. You're welcome back. And for an update on the collapsed building in Ikoi, Lagos, emergency workers are set for another night of rescue operations as the, at the collapsed building in Ikoi, Lagos. It's continuing right now. Adini Taiwo completes the report. The search and rescue operation is green but necessary. Disaster and emergency workers who have been busy with evacuating those trapped in the building have again dug in for the night, set for another round of nocturnal operation. So far, their effort has led to evacuation of some people alive, while official record as at the time of filing this report puts the number of those brought out dead at 10. We've taken out nine people. They are people. Some people have even been discharged, about two or so. But we've also sadly taken out 10 dead bodies. Since that figure was released by the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Obafemi Amzat, more bodies have been recovered. And majority of those we have recovered are on the uppermost area, and mostly the workers, mostly the laborers. I expect that maybe among the people that are ready, the workers of this site, among them, they can select about 20 people and maybe give them short training. Okay, this is what you will go for, this is what you will not do, and all those, so that we can have enough hands. Earlier, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba Alkali, visited the scene for on the spot assessment. If everybody is found to have compromised, yes. There should be some action on it. Families of those still trapped in the building are keeping vigil at the scene, waiting in shared anxiety, while the nation also looks forward to sharing news in solidarity with them. In Lagos, Adini Itaewo, NTA News. Do you know that clicking on that link may be all that is required to hack into a device or system and may lead to loss of huge capital and collapse of system? Now, a sensitization forum on cybersecurity for the telecommunications sector and the danger has been organized by the Office of the National Security Advisor. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. Cyberspace, the fifth and fastest growing domain and fundamental aspect of human life, promotes communications and ease socioeconomic activities globally. Thus, the increasing dependence on the cyberspace comes with the risk that threatens national security, cyberspace operations, as well as the negative impacts on critical infrastructure of nation state whose operations are reliant on the cyberspace. In Nigeria, for instance, there are more than 140 million internet subscriptions and 73.5% internet penetration. This, sure the Minister of Communications of and Digital Economy says, mm -hmm. is a paradox. Each and every one of these subscribers is a target of our cyber criminals. This is a clear indication that Nigeria has gone digital. Then we must all get ready to make sure that we protect ourselves. This multi-stakeholder sensitization on the implementation of the Cyber Security Policy 2021 for the telecom sector is aimed at further developing the capacity to counter emerging threats through collaborative efforts. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Kanu has joined the League of States and joined digital terrestrial television services with official switchover gently superintended by Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduti and Minister of Information and Culture Laya Mohammed Abdullahi Mustafa witnessed the switch on ceremony held at the Kanu State Government House and now reports. <laughs> This formally admits Kano into the world of digital terrestrial television services. It provides improved quality television and other value added services. 
we follow the entire efforts and leadership of the Honorable Minister of Information, Al-Hajjimai Muhammad. Minister of Information and Culture, Lahir Muhammad, believes more job opportunities will be created through dealership, installation, and activation of the set-up box. It includes potential for interactivity and increased market competition and innovation thanks to the potential arrival of new entrants at different levels in the value chain. He assured that the federal government will continue to work towards total coverage of the nook and cranny of the country. Kano State Government Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduji disclosed will facilitate local production of highly subsidized set of boxes as part of support to the digitization process. If we have the buy in of the governors of other states like we have had. Meanwhile, Information and Culture Minister Laya Muhammad has made a strong case for NTA Kanu to migrate to a network center under the NTA transmission sector. The minister made the plea when he was granted audience by the Kanu State Governor, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. The governor, in a quick response, said that is the reason why the state government is embracing the digital switchover. Anthony Fawson reports. The Information and Culture Minister, while in Kanu, was with the state governor, his host, he said, with an estimated population of over 50 million, a national television should have the presence of a network center. Your Excellency, sir, I was slightly taken aback when the DGNTA informed me that NTA does not have a network center in Kano. I was taken aback for two reasons. One, Kano's state being if not the most popular state in the country, probably the second most popular state in the country. Then, with a TV housing population of over 2.5 million, how can Kani not have a network center? If it has not been done, the expense I think is a big omission on all our parts. And uh, I think we must rectify that immediately, yes, yes. For Governor Ganduji, the minister's case for NTA is well noted. The state government is playing an important role in order to make this project a very successful one. We have already trained some technicians that will participate in this program. We are dialoguing with stakeholders and even with manufacturers. The you know that you will require some subvention, some assistance to other organizations so that they can be on board, especially in, part, but in particular to provision of some gadgets. So the current state government has taken full statistics of what we should do in order to promote this switch over. In Kanu. Antony Forson, NTA News. The fact that Nigeria is not included in the Index of Nations with Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists, as was reported by the Committee to Protect Journalists, is a clear indication that the country remains a top media-friendly nation in the world. Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, said this at a policy dialogue on protection of journalists in Abuja. Adebola Brooks in Sunday reports. Between 2006 and the year 2020, more than 1,200 journalists have been killed globally for reporting the news and bringing information to the public as documented by the Committee to Protect Journalists. Affected by these criminal acts, journalists in Nigeria have been campaigning to end impunity for crimes against them as one of the most pressing issues in guaranteeing freedom of expression and access to information for all citizens. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the 2021 International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. Key players say this protection should cover all media practitioners. Including community media workers and citizen journalists 
and others who may be using new media as a means of reaching their audiences. This is the stand of UNESCO. The federal government of Nigeria has taken steps in advancing the rule of law, application of human rights, enhancing the freedom of information, and by implication, freedom of the press as well as administration of criminal justice. The president is now interested in the handing of any journalist. Whatever will be done to protect journalists, he will subscribe to it. The Nigerian press remains one of the most vibrant in the continent. The dialogue was organized by the Federal Ministry of Justice in collaboration with Managing Conflicts in Nigeria program. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. To the legislature now, as part of legislative function to ensure effective discharge of its mandate, the House Committee on Internally Displaced Persons has visited the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. Ruth Aguele reports on the oversight visit. They hope for a better life, a circumstance beyond their control. Despite the odds, the plight of internally displaced persons across the country have continued to raise major concerns for the relevant authorities. This visit by the House Committee on Internally Displaced Persons to the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is to examine progress report and performance of 2021 fiscal year, budget compliance and implementation on resettlement and reintegration of IDPs to their various communities. In the report, we expect to have further appropriation on releases details on the implementation of both capital and the current budget, stating clearly the procurement procedure. The Commission, however, wants to fill up gaps in various areas like data planning management, expansion of operational offices, food security, among others, for better livelihood of IDPs. There are still funding gaps and challenges that we experience at the Commission. There's need for livelihood support, health and education, and empowerment for our persons of concerns. If you look at our budget line, they are very weak when you look at the figures and the amount of people that we're intervening for. The committee adjourned scrutiny of the document to later day. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NT News. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency is worried that while Nigeria has 58,000 licensed pharmacists, the country has over 1 million unlicensed peddlers of illicit drugs. Chairman of the agency, Bubo Morwa, made this known when the House Committee on Narcotics paid an oversight visit to the agency. John Yakok reports. Two crimes committed are believed to be drug-induced. To check this trend, the chairman, NDLEA Buba Marwa, stressed the need for the pharmacy's council bill to be signed into law for it to take effect. We know the patent medicine stores. They are some of the greatest sellers of controlled substances and narcotic drugs, which they shouldn't. On the issue of legalizing cannabis, he noted that this will further compound drug-induced crimes in the country. We, as a committee, it will be very difficult for us to go and uh, uh, sponsor a bill to legitimize uh, uh, cannabis. We are not intending to legit legitimize it. What is bothering us right now is how to reposition the NDLEA. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Steel Development has held its public hearing on 1B and motion. They are the bill for an act to reconstitute the Metallurgical Training Institute, UNICHA, to provide training for students and researchers in iron and steel industry because this institute, if well established and managed the way we want it, all over the continent of Africa, people will be coming for studies. The institute was established under military decree, and since then, it has not received any legislative backing. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. The People's Democratic Party has held a mega rally in Oka ahead of this Saturday's governorship election in Anambra State, attended by some governors of other states elected on the party platform and some of the newly elected national leaders. The party pledged to make Anambra great and appeal to youth in particular to come out en masse, vote peacefully and ensure that the process is completed. Details in our subsequent bulletins. Let's now join 
Michael in our Lagos studio for more on network news. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. Strengthening the capacity of the police and other security agencies for internal operations is the mandate, is the emphasis of a workshop declared open by Ogun State Governor Dapwa Biodun in Lagos. Samuel Johnson reports that the Inspector General of Police at Kalibaba at the event confirmed the arrest of those suspected to have invaded the residence of Justice Mary Odini. The workshop with participants from police formations in Zone 2 and other security agencies, among other stakeholders, was to strategize on maintaining security in internal operations, especially in a democratic dispensation. Ogun State Governor, while declaring the two-day event open, said establishing state police and encouraging cooperation among all security agencies is the way out of the security challenges confronting the nation. This training workshop for all security agencies in one legal state is a practical demonstration of the commitment of the Nigerian police in zone two to ensure the security of life and property in its position. The Inspector General of Police, in a keynote address, explained that the force headquarters is committed to achieving effective security through collaboration with other agencies in the zone. Capacity building of this nature is critical as it exposes law enforcement officers to new skills, which will be invaluable in their quest to sharpen their operational and critical reason ability in the discharge of their duties and responsibilities. He also gave an update on the invasion of Justice Mary Odile's residence. For now, we've been able to arrest the perpetrators of this act and we are investigating to unravel the circumstances. The Assistant Inspector General, AIG, in charge of Zone 2, Johnson Kukumo, said the need to strategically police the states necessitated the workshop. All federal and state security agencies in the two states are attending the workshop. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. The 2021 Nigeria Navy Warrant Officers Convention has ended with a call on the need for recapitalizing the service through sustaining and improving the current levels of leadership and management training for naval personnel. Hingno John Adams tells us more. Warrant officers as leaders and role models for upliftment. It's been two days of intense brainstorming for these defenders of the nation's maritime territorial integrity. The focus of discussions at the convention was improving the operational prowess of naval warrant officers who serve as link between officer cadres and naval ratings. The chief of the naval staff, Vice Admiral Awal Gambo, says the need to strive towards building a credible navy calls for continuous enlightenment and reawakening of the tenets of professionalism among naval personnel at all levels. And this is what the convention focused on. It is sincerely believed that this will lead to a more responsive leadership of non-commissioned officers care, which will bear positively on operational efficiency in the Nigerian Navy. Some friends of the service were honored. 2016 marked the first edition of the convention. This rendition signals the closure of this year's event with hope from participants that their services would have witnessed a lot of improvement before the next convention. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports shortly after this break. Please stay. Thanks for rejoining us. President Muhammadu Buhari joins all members of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in celebrating with party stalwart and loyalist Johanna Dialop on his 71st birthday coming up on November 23rd, November 3rd, 2021. The president congratulates the party chieftain who has played a major role in strengthening the party at state and national levels 
On the auspicious moment, rejoicing with all family members, friends and associates, President Buhari affirms that the selflessness and sacrifices of members like their love saw to the foundation and growth of the APC and their wisdom continues to sustain the party and democracy in the country. President Buhari prays for longer life and strength for the party chieftain. An international Islamic teacher, Ismaila Mufti Meng, says the best way of life is to do the right thing and be a source of mercy to all people, as the Prophet of Islam was sent to provide mercy to the entire human race. Mufti Meng was speaking while delivering a lecture commemorating the life of the Islamic jihadist, Sheikh Usman Mfodiou, which coincided with the 15th anniversary of the 20th Sultan of Sokoto on the throne. Dalhatu Abdullahi has the report. The theme for the lecture is religious understanding and a tolerance for peaceful coexistence in the developing world, perspectives, challenges, and prospects. The eighth edition of the Shehu Bin Fodio Week came at the time the 20th Sultan of Sokoto is marking 15th anniversary on the throne of the historic caliphate. Delivering the lecture, Ismail Mufti Menk said he is proud with the diversity of Nigerians, describing tolerance as a pillar of development in multi-religious and tribal diversities. We are here to discuss this reason and to understand it in order for us to be able to respect one another with our differences. Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad said since his emergence as the 20th Sultan of the Sokoto Caliphate, he sustained the attributes of his ancestors by working for Islam, Muslims, and the entire public. Sheikh bin Fodio's prize for leadership was presented to the leader of the National Mosque, Professor Sheikh Galadanchi, Abdullahi Gwandu's prize for scholarship to let Sheikh Ahmed Lemu, Sultan Muhammad Bello's prize for governance to the 20th Sheikh of Borno, Abubakar Umar Garbay, Nana Asma'u's prize for social development to Professor Sadia Umar Bello, and the Sultan Sa'ad Prize for Peace Building was given to let Dr. Abdulatif Adegbiti. Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal said Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abu Bakr symbolizes the attributes of the Caliphate which remain a role model and a guide for exemplary leadership of the University of London. In Sokoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Next, it's business news with Benny Adams. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to business. The Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, NIPC, reports that the sum of $8.99 billion was tracked as investment announcement for quarter three of 2021, a 130% increase in the corresponding period in 2020, which was $3.95 billion. Acting Executive Secretary of the Commission, Emeka Ofo, disclosed that a total of 33 projects were tracked across eight states during the period, with the month of August as the most active during the quota, accounting for 64 of the total announcements in the period. On the review, Lagos State came tops with 20 projects, accounting for 81% of the total. Rivers, Oyo States followed and the top sectors were manufacturing electricity, gas, steam, and air conditioning supply. Others are ICT and the transportation. Domestic investors were the most active during the period, followed by announcements from South Korea, South Africa, and the Kingdom of Spain. The NIPC launched a one-stop investment center where businesses can be registered who investors, as well as a showcase specific investment opportunities. For transparency, accountability and proactive disclosure have been made. We are committed to building on the successes of recent years as well as breaking new frontiers. We are working tirelessly to ensure that there is an enabling environment for investors to come and invest in the country. Around the capital market, investors gained 19.10 billion naira as all share index inches up by 0.09% to close at 42,013.39 basis points. 318.9 million shares exchanged hands in 5,492 deals, valued at 2.3.2 billion naira. Equity capitalization ended the day at 21.9 trillion naira. UBA, FBNH and Zenit were the most active stocks. That is business news. Network news continues in Ibadan with Kemi. Thank you, 
you, Benny, and a warm welcome to Ibadan. It was a show of African culture and tradition at a symposium organized by the Center for Black and African Art and Civilization, CBAC, with the theme, Black and African People, Resurgent Racism and the Challenges of Development in the 21st Century, Afrophobia and the Dynamics of Race Relations. Details of the report by Adejoke Luyemi is here presented. Students, including lovers of African tradition, gathered together to discuss and find a lasting solution to problems facing black and African people. Africans were urged to come together and be united to address salient issues confronting them. This is more so as recent events have shown that the issues against the black race can only be dismantled and won when there is a deliberate effort by the black and African people to redirect their focus and attention into building synergies. Various speakers at the event, including Oni of Ife, Oba, Adeyeye, Eniton, Oguuse, decried the way and manner African culture and tradition are gradually going into extinction. He therefore called on African race to preserve their heritage through proper documentation for the sake of incoming generations. Nobody can tell our story ourselves. Nobody knows our house more than us, except all of us. To understand our uniqueness, color of our skin, it's probably because of how confident we are. He also suggested that history and culture should be added to the nation's educational curriculum for relevance and documentation. Pensioners who were not captured in 2019 are now to heave a sigh of relief as Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, Peter, embarked on mop mop-up verification exercise for them. Correspondent Ayomi Kwajibola reports that the exercise held in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital. The aim of the verification exercise is to ascertain the eligible pensioners under the defined benefit scheme, a role eligible pensioners who were not on the directory payroll while promptly removing the unqualified. According to the Executive Secretary, Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, Peter they decided to embark on the mop up verification in all zones across the country after receiving complaints from pensioners who were not captured in the verification carried out in 2019 for pensioners in agencies and parasitas, adding that mobile verification will also be conducted for sick and infirm pensioners. We're asking all of them to avail themselves of this opportunity to come and get them tried. Because without that verification, we won't have you on our Moses Olontade who retired from my post in 2006, and Fumilayo Adeyemi, who retired in 2007 from Anglican Commercial Grammar School, Oshobo, expressed profound gratitude to Peter for giving them the second chance to be verified and captured in their database. They are attending to us in a very nice way. We, we are comfortable. The establishment of Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, Peter, by the federal government in 2013, is necessitated by the need to reform the old pension office under the defined benefit scheme in Ibado. You're still watching Network News on the NTA. The news continues in Abuja after this timeout. Stay with us. You're welcome back. Let's join Badi for Sports Update. Hello, Badi. Many thanks, Jumai. Safety babes of Abuja on Tuesday emerged the women's champions of the 2021 Prudent Energy Handball Pr Premier League. The 2019 champions who dethroned 2020 winners Adorable Angels of Quara at the Dig Deep to secure a 27-23 victory over city rivals Defender Babes with their championship win now subject to the final determination of the technical committee. In other results, by Yosa Queen's beat Seaside Babes narrowly by 31 to 30 goals. Ibo Grass surpassed defeated Kada Queens 32 to 24. In the men's category, Police Machine beat Plateau Vipers 29 to 30, uh, while Niger United recorded a 31 to 26 win over Lagos Seasiders. 
to football now. Talks now have appointed Antonio Conte as their new manager following the sack of Nuno Espirito Santo. The 52-year-old Italian who sports manager, sports chairman, I beg your pardon, Daniel Levi, targeted before appointing Nuno in the summer, assigned an 18-month contract with an option to extend following successful talks with the club's hierarchy on Monday. Let's now talk the UEFA Champions League as Chelsea moved a step closer to booking their place in the Champions League knockout stages as Akim CX 56-minute strike was enough to secure one new victory over Malmo in southern Sweden. Volksburg recorded a 2-1 win over RB Salzburg in the other game already concluded. Six more games are currently underway. On Wednesday, Real Madrid will entertain Shakhtar Donetsk. Milan and Porto have a date. Dortmund will host Ajax. Manchester City are at home to Club Brugge with the big one coming between Liverpool and Atletico Madrid at Anfield. That was it on Sports Update. It's back to Jume. Thanks, by the way. It's going to be a busy week in the world of football. Well, that's network news for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Before we go, don't forget to step up, be a star, join NT in the fight against rape and rapist. I am Jumwe Yusuf. Good night. <laughs>